In this episode, I get asked about what other books I'm reading right now, and I'm actually reading something that has recently become my favorite business book ever because it gives the most honest prescription and description of entrepreneurship I've ever seen. I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man, check my titles mate quickly, came from the sky with the light of day in me. Hello and welcome, we're having a very good conversation right now. We're live on Instagram over here uh, and we just recorded another episode prior to rolling on this one. Now one of the people that are watching us on Instagram said, I didn't realise you record the intro at the end. To which I responded, of course I record the intro at the end because I don't know what question is going to be asked until it gets asked and then I answer it. And so the intro that you guys saw before we rolled the sort of introduction reel, I haven't recorded yet. And so we'll do the episode. Rosie will give me the answer. I'll, Rosie will give me the question. I'll give you the answer and then we'll cut and then I'll record the intro that you just saw. So it's show business, right? A lot of things happen. It's all business. fucking, it's all, it, it is. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's Hollywood. It's all, it's all not what it seems. Is Mozzie 96? Is that Tim Morris? No, no okay, no. No, Mozzie, okay. Tim Morris is not 19. He's <laughs> 21 years old. Tim Morris, okay. He's, just, he's asking a lot of great questions. Okay, and, um, good. Keep them coming. Okay, and Rosie, so. if, you need, if they come through, maybe write them down here so they don't have to cut the instantly. Yep, yep, All righty, thanks Rosie, for question. That technical input. Um, so we're going to, Mozzie 96, we're going to answer your last question, which was um, What are you reading currently, Jack? Yes. Really good question. Okay, what am I reading currently? Mozzie 96, good question. The book, one of the books I'm reading at the moment that I want to talk to you guys about that I'm reading at the moment is now one of my favorite business books of all time. And yeah, see, that's the kind of reaction I want. Thank you, Rosie. Is um, the most honest book I've ever read in my life. It is called The Hard Thing About Hard Things. It's written by a guy called Ben. I'm going to destroy his surname. It's like Ben Horowitz, I think. I might not be pronouncing that accurately. Um, but Ben is an incredible entrepreneur. He's an incredible investor. One of his main um, plays that he did, uh, I'm not actually sure when he did it. Well, it was around the dot-com time, so it would have been early 2000s. Is he, he had a business that was quite a substantial business relative to, to you know, other early stage businesses, particularly in Australia. Ben uh, is based over in the Valley. Um, and the dot-com crash hit, they didn't have product to market fit, uh, he needed to do a round of redundancies, he then needed to do another round of redundancies, he then needed to do another round of redundancies, he went through hell on earth for about 18 months where the business was coming close to hitting the wall, you know, for uh, non-stop for about 18 months, which isn't a pretty place to live for a month, let alone 18 months. Um, and then he, he ultimately had $2 million in future revenues, right? He, he employed about 360 staff, so $2 million in future revenues would equate to about, I don't know, 5% of his future wages. So very, very close to hitting the wall. Um, and he then took the company public just after the dot-com crash where it wasn't advisable to take tech companies or dot-com companies public, right? And so... It's, it's a story about, and you know, one of, one of Ben's investors has since pointed out to him that he's never seen a company do three rounds of redundancies and then become a billion dollar company. So the company that Ben did that with might be the only company in history, I need to check that, but that has done three rounds of redundancies and gone on to become a billion dollar company. And so the hard thing about hard things, it's a book that looks at, it's, it's the most honest depiction of entrepreneurship I've ever seen and it's actually changed the way I will write books going forward it's changed the way I'll probably do presentations going forward because what Ben points out so freaking accurately is he says the hard thing about entrepreneurship is not coming up with an amazing vision or a big audacious goal or whatever the buzzwords are the the hard work, the hard thing is not coming up with the dream. The hard thing is what happens when you wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning every morning for 18 months and the dreams become a nightmare, 
right? The hard thing is not about creating these big audacious goals. The hard thing is about what do you do when everything is crumbling around you and you no longer have the resources, including the internal energy to keep going towards its pursuit. The hard thing is not about attracting great people to your vision that's gonna change the world. The hard thing is about attracting great people, retaining great people, what to do when those great people become entitled and start asking for too much money or start you know, holding the company at ransom. Or, like That's the hard thing, right? And so for me, it highlighted that so much of the public entrepreneurial rhetoric that goes on is fundamentally disconnected from the realities of entrepreneurship, right? And I speak about the realities and the challenge. You guys have heard me say heaps of times that, you know, 95% of this game is challenge, right? 5% of the time, if you're lucky, is achieving targets, hitting milestones, winning awards, getting recognition in one form or another, right? That's like 5% of it. And I think with the uh, sort of increased romanticism and popularization of entrepreneurship, it's kind of attracted these millions of people that think entrepreneurship is that 5%. They think entrepreneurship is that, you know, sort of Richard Branson sitting on a hammock on Necker Island running 300 companies from his mobile phone type thing. That's not entrepreneurship. That's entrepreneurship when you've done it fucking well and you've given your entire fucking life to it and you're now 65 in Richard's case. Uh, and he's a freak, so he's done it incredibly well, right? But that's not the first, you know, if you read one of Branson's books or watch any interviews with him or go to Necker Island and meet him, anyone can, um, and talk to him. He'll say, the reason I live on an island for half the year is I spent 20 years trying to keep Virgin alive, right? And, and it's true, he spent probably 15 to 20 years in Hal, like for the first probably 10 or 15 years as Virgin continued to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. They weren't profitable for a very long time. He had an overdraft of a million dollars. He turned it into an overdraft, so like a debt facility from a bank of $3 million. Essentially, it blew out to an overdraft of $40 million to the point where he needed to sell Virgin Records for a billion dollars in order just to finance um, the airlines and to pay off his debt and all of that sort of stuff. He took on so much debt relatively easily that you just couldn't do today because it's harder to, to, to acquire debt, particularly for entrepreneurial style companies, um, and needed to find ways literally for the first two decades, right, two decades to keep Virgin alive for long enough in order for it to become the Virgin that we see today, right? So Virgin wasn't built on a happy, on a, on a happy, on a hammock on Necker Island. Virgin was built in boardrooms by Branson 24 hours a day in cities all around the world with bankers and CFOs and, um, you know, so much of Branson's teams to team, well, his teams today are constructed by like ex-Macquarie bankers and stuff. And you kind of go, well, why someone like Branson who, uh, you know, I don't think he's financially driven, he may be, but, you know, the brand is about fun and all that sort of stuff. But, but his team is like, like, they're killers. Like these guys are finance, ex-bankers, you know, they're very different to the kind of person you'd usually associate with the brand that Branson talks about. And you go, well, why is that so? It's because he understands the financial and commercial realities and the fucking challenges of running a business, particularly how those challenges become amplified when the financial and legal side of things isn't taken care of, right? So entrepreneurship is challenging. And I think the more that we can talk about the challenging, just like the real side of it, giving an honest depiction of what entrepreneurship is, the more we can do that, the more meaningful and truly uh, supportive the conversation becomes around what this path actually is, rather than talking about like this mirage fantasy type thing when the reality is something substantially different. Talk about the reality, and in doing so, you'll connect more with your audience. You know, books like um, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, for instance, in Ben's case, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a refreshingly honest conversation uh, that I thank Ben for writing the book because uh, it's written in such a way that's just so blatantly honest and talks about his personal challenges, talks about his professional challenges, his financial challenges, and you just go, fuck, like, I, I bought one for every person on my executive team and they go, like, it's almost like he's describing, like, every business person's journey, right? It's just that, it's so... It's really interesting to me that a book can describe almost every business person's journey, but is so unique, right? It points to the fact that the conversation we're having a lot of the time isn't an actual reflection of what the fuck goes on in a real business. So, it's my new favorite book.
We should try Question. and get Ben on. I want Ben to be a guest on oh, the show. Rosie, that is the best. Can you do that? Can we reach out, yeah, please? Because yeah, yeah. like he, do, he does talks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if we send him this yeah. episode, that'd be great. Ben, this is coming to uh, you. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. And we'll, um, we'll try and get him on the show via like a Google Hangout or something. Anyway, guys, in the comments below, what I want from you is what is your number one business book? So not necessarily life or personal development or spirituality, anything like that. What is your number one business book in the comments below. Great question. We look forward to speaking with you guys next time.